Yo, yo, yo. What's up? <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna take a shot really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking today too, like, what would a what would a negative pop collab look like? What, what do you think? I do a lot of dark stuff, like black and white, yeah. and like, uh, you know, Eric, Eric, too dope. Yeah. So like. He he had asked me once, he was like, Do you see yourself doing a lot of like colorful stuff or like what is it? And I was like, I really tried to think of like like would I? And it's like no, because like my mom growing up, there used to be a store it's called uh White and Black New York. And there was it's in there like every mall. But all they sell is black and white clothes. Damn. So like I think that's where it just kinda comes from. You know what I mean? Like just seeing her outfits and being like I don't wanna say gaudy, but like that's what she'd be accused of, of like real like dark vibes being real gaudy and shit like that so I, I just learned that word today that's weird really yeah that's crazy like matt is gaudy yeah <laughs> matt is real gaudy i just yeah that's crazy but you had some colorful i mean as far as like the the teal and yellow uh yeah yeah joints. but, but like, the you know design itself was black and white so exactly i get what you're saying yo what up you never tried rapping no in like college like super drunk once because like my, my roommate had like he had bought like a focus right and a mic and he had a mac and whatever and like you know drunk as hell we got on the track but like really like really trying not never tried it damn you know Hiram? Mm -mm. damn so Hiram, he was like he he went to high school with me okay at Verizon was and he ended up working like at a studio and there's this one time that me joey squared we went to the studio we were just fucking around and he's probably got like i don't even know if he still has the audio but i just remember saying young colombiano <laughs> <laughs> it was very horrible bars but i'm always trying to rap like on my own yeah. i don't think i'll ever take it serious. i <clears> think <throat> i could like like because i'd be in the studio with rappers or, or artists you know right. what i mean and it's like i could throw a bar here and there you know what i mean like when it comes to me quick but like putting together like a structure of a song of like the chorus the hook and all of that yeah. i don't think i could Thanks. it wouldn't be it just wouldn't be as successful <laughs> as somebody else you know i'm gonna leave that to them i could see you being like a big body best like just oh my god like, yeah. like just talking like just it, like dj Khaled. like bro i've been called dj Khaled my whole life <laughs> you feel me like my whole life like since like high school so it's just like yeah that would be me that would definitely be, be me. Like, i get me. accused of being burner all the Lewis. time too yeah yeah damn yeah. that's fire all right, let's get it. <clears throat> Three, two, one. <clears throat> Welcome back to another episode of the PVP. It's your boy, Paz Prince. And today I got a very special guest. He's the owner of Negatives, designer. Um, probably the most energetic, enthusiastic person I know. Like every time I see him, he's got a smile on his face. Uh, let's give it up for Louis Leo. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. No, it's good to have you, bro. Um, for the people that don't know, Lewis, he, uh, he's he been supporting me since like my ADF days when uh, me and Squared, we were we have a brand called Effectus, and Lewis would just pull up to the crib and he would just cop our gear. And then I'm pretty sure we met at AC's parties. You know yeah, what I'm saying? probably. Because like AC's parties were legendary. Shout out AC. Um, and yeah, then I found out you went to Joe's. Yep. And we know a couple of people like shout out fiji mutual friends yeah shout yeah. out fiji that's my dog and then um <clears throat> yeah we mm. just worked i mean we did the superstar experience together yeah that was fun hit. yeah that was, that was such a good show 10 out of 10 <laughs> we'll talk about that for sure but uh if you could like let the people know like yeah who you are like where you're from uh my name is luis uh leal leo however you want to say it um i'm from chicago grew up in westchester uh like like Pat said, I went to Joe's. Um and just kinda, you know, been doing my thing in like this scene or you know, however you wanna kinda like say it, but like yeah, I just been around. Yeah. You know. No, you definitely tapped in with the right people. Where like what's your ethnicity? Uh I'm Mexican and Cuban. Crazy. Yeah. Nice. So my mom's Mexican and my dad he born in Chicago, but like my grandma like off the boat type shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like you ever go to Cuba? No, I want to. I really do. I really want to go. Because I know, like, you've been to Colombia and shit like that. And, like, my ex-girlfriend, she been, like, to her hometown. And when people go back to Puerto Rico, like, I always wanted to go. Like, I've been to Mexico. I, was, mm -hmm. I went when I was, like, six, I think. Six or seven. 
I ain't been back since, but like I always wanted to go to Cuba just because like the, like the nostalgic, like classic cars and stuff that they have and like the architecture there is so different. Yeah, like I want to go just for that, like the colorfulness, like the way things are like castle and like I don't know. It just it seems so cool from the outside looking in. You know, you probably got some family you could stay with, right? Like you travel like within the country a lot. I remember we were talking about going to Atlanta for some blanks or something. It might, it might have not been Atlanta. No, uh, Vegas. We were trying Vegas. to go to okay, Vegas for yeah, some links, yeah. But, yeah, because they have, like, this expo mm -hmm. of, like, you know, I'm sure they probably have one in Chicago every now and then, too. But I think Vegas is, like, they put on, like, this expo of just, like, cut and sew fashion. And all these manufacturers come. Dave, you know Dave. So yeah. I guess Dave, he's the one who kind of put me on. I was like, yeah, we should go. We never actually ended up going, but, yeah. I remember for a while there was one called magic i don't know if that's the same one but mm. i remember because um like joe fresca and uh vic lloyd like mm. when we were me and squared we would try to like sit in on their like workshops and then they were like yeah you need to go to these conventions um but yeah man just so like the people know um i wanted you to explain what negatives was because like i said you're you're one of the most like optimistic people i I guess I don't know if you're optimistic, but you're very energetic and like very happy when I see you. So I wanted yeah. to know like the meaning behind negatives. Um, yeah, man. So me and Eric is my partner. Um, he lives in New York. We actually went to college together. Damn. Um, so he's my partner. He's like the main designer. I would like call myself like the strategist or creative director. Yeah. And obviously, like he has that title too because he's the one that's actually designing all of our like actual like designs you know what i mean i'm like i'm picking colorways i'm picking materials i'm making sure shit's getting done in time but um me and eric actually started our first project i wouldn't even say it's a project but he was like learning digital art at the time and he did my face nice. right and i was like all right like what am i gonna do with this so obviously <laughs> you do what everybody does and put it as like your profile picture right or like anything like that right so i put it on my twitter and then i was like we had this uh like button machine in college and it was free to use all you had to do was like print your buttons and they had like the cutout and all the other materials that you needed and it was free to use so i was like all right fuck it i'm gonna put my twitter name right under the picture yeah. and start handing out buttons and i think that was like my sophomore year of college it was like the first thing we ever did together it was like the first product yeah literally first product yeah. was just he drew my face it was it's if, if you look at it now, it's probably bad, like really, really bad, like rookie shit. Yeah. But like, it was so raw to like just be passing out like my face. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it was cool. I was like, I would go to class and I'd like be walking and like it's on people's backpacks, people that I never met before. Crazy. You know what I mean? So it was fun. Yeah, I think people are willing to support like just like something that's like fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, so then, how did that turn into negative? So, like, years later, um you know he's in the scene he's like in the ad agency scene so he's like worked on projects with like nike like um what did he just do he did the um kobe's wife they mm -hmm. had just did like this little thing with nike like a little story and they like i don't know like but he's like on the creative team for that you know what i mean That's so right. like he was on the creative team like when the bucks won the championship like designing like shit like that mm -hmm. So he's been doing that and doing photography forever. And I needed somebody that can like get my ideas and put them on paper and make it happen. So I just was like, hey, bro, like, you know, you're my guy. Like I used to roll up his blunts, you know, like he would buy weed from me and I would roll it up for him. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, that's my guy. So he was just like, yeah, I'll be down to put some shit on paper and, you know, work on it together. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, let's do it. So like the way negatives came about was like we were thinking like, how could we be different? You know, like all of the the initial meetings, like I'm sure you and Squared or you whoever, yeah. like you have is like, damn, what are we gonna do? Who are we gonna be? What's our ethos? Mm -hmm. So like I came up with like, I'm really obsessed with like oxymorons, like Biggie Smalls and shit like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was doing like, I heard this Brent Faye song and in the interlude, he was like empathetic narcissism. Like he just has that like yeah. little thing and I'm like, <laughs> And I looked at it and I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, damn, like to be empathetic is so left and to be a narcissist is so right. Yeah. And like to be like together in the middle, like that's where I, I feel like I live personally, like in that middle ground of everything. Like it's not too nasty and it's not too good either. Damn. I can relate that. Well, it's like even just the podcast, like proud disappointment. That's why you know I want to be like, on it. Get, you know what I mean? Nah, like, cause that's what I was like, damn, yeah. that's, that's me. You feel me? Like I I'm breaking you. like all of the stigmas 
or you know like my mom like she's really like educated like you know she right go to school get a good job buy a crib as is common with invest. like immigrants you know bro yeah so. and my mom was like it's like she went to devry like she's the first person in our family to go to college and then i went to marquette so like i kind of like wound up to her a little bit Damn. you know what i mean so like i'm the first person to like leave the state go to school get mm -hmm. a degree in my family so like when you were like doing like proud disappointment i was like damn that's kind of me you know what i mean like that's yeah. who i am that's how i feel every day because they probably expect you to do something with their degree i mean are you or like what was the degree advertising oh okay yeah. i mean you kind of use it yeah i mean i, I use everything in like theory you know what i mean like yeah. but like actually working in it is not something that i you know really do yeah so. true yeah because you would have to like work under somebody or like the man or whatever but like the, man. the way that you're that you might feel like a disappointment is because you're um trying to be your own boss right you're trying to like push yeah. your own brand and stuff yeah that's exactly what i was thinking when I, like because i don't feel like a disappointment to myself but i feel like a disappointment to my parents right like, yeah I but know I, exactly how you feel. I gotta, I got at some point, I just gotta be like, fuck it. Like, I'm proud the way that I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause, like, I'll I be telling my, my best friends this all the time is like, where we're at in life as like Latinos or even like, you know, minorities in general, like, we're not that far removed from like the real struggle. Like, I grew up good. Like, I never had to worry about facts, but it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. And I know for my mom, it had to be even more difficult. Like, she hopped the border a couple times. You know what I mean? Like, I never had to go through that. <laughs> Bro, this one time I tried to explain it to my dad. I was like, like, it's relative to me, you know? Like, my struggle is, like, only from what I know. And he he wouldn't even, like, entertain the idea. He was like, like, the shit that I went through. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Bro, <laughs> like, do you know how many times I've had that convo <laughs> with my mom? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, I sacrificed everything. I'm like, yeah. And look what I'm able to do because of that. Right. You know what I mean? I get to be me. Like, yeah. I get to pursue a passion that, like, I'm going to do this forever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going to create, whether it's, like, with my homies in music or with, like, the clothing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to make something happen. The podcast, the videos, whatever. Yeah. Like, I'm going to create something. Damn. So, I guess I'm going to jump into this question really quick. But, like, what is, what's something that you're proud of and something that's, like, that disappoints you? It doesn't necessarily have to be, like, you. It could be, like, anything in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think in general, like, life things, like, I could always be a better son or a better grandson, a better brother. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to say, like, I let people down, but I have. You know what I mean? Like, there's some things that I'm not proud of. You know, I think every person has those personal things of, you know, young love and making mistakes oh, or, yeah. you know, just, like, not understanding people's feelings. And when you say certain things to somebody, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm not proud of certain those moments, but... I'm not disappointed in them because like they you know they make you who you are as a person facts you know what i mean like you learn from that and i think that's part of my brand too it's like the negative stuff is like like we want to acknowledge it you mm -hmm. know what i mean because that made us who we are like i could see the brighter part of life because i went through so many bad things as a child you know what i mean like i can appreciate the good moment a little more because i know what it's like to not have those good moments i feel you. so you weren't working for anybody in the ad advertising business but you've uh you're helping joy with the grills right i remember you had told me like oh if you yeah. ever need a grill hit me up and yeah. i'm sure you met a lot of cool people like yeah we, i mean i met like, like this uh this girl named takara she does like the nike like shoe drop stuff in chicago like she's really like big in like that kind of like blog space yeah um so i did her she did like one little tooth but that just came about from my homie dave and marquise and just being around that kind of like group and like I'm always like you, like you said like I'm positive like I'm always like lending a helping hand or like do you need anything or you know I'm behind the table like passing out shirts or cars or you know what I mean so I was just doing those things yeah. and Joey was like hey like I see you hustling I see you doing your thing like you know a lot of phases you know a lot of people you're not scared to say hi to somebody like do you want to do this with me and I was like yeah hell yeah I always wanted to grill so the reason I did it was just to get my <laughs> grill and then do other people's shit because it was cool no yeah every time I see you, you got a big smile on your face and like that grill Thank is you. definitely chilling yeah Thank you. I was telling you, like, uh, yeah, when I grew up, obviously, I think everybody, I don't know, from our generation, uh, wanted a grill. So they were, like, putting aluminum foil in their Bro, mouth yeah. and shit. I remember doing that shit. I remember Nelly, fucking Kanye, Paul Wall, all of those guys. Like, yeah, Paul it was just, yeah, Paul Wall, like, Legendary. just fucking wearing them shits. And it was like, I didn't want a chain. I wanted a grill. And, like, so a lot of people don't know this. I had braces growing up. Damn. Yeah, so, like, 
I had a, it wasn't fucked up, but I have this gap in the bottom of my teeth. I have it right now. You know what I mean? But the girl covers it. Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I did it. And I did it the way I designed it on purpose to like make it seem like there's everything there. It's sick. Yeah. It's like, you like fixed it. Basically. Got your, yeah. Yeah. Would you ever get veneers? So like they're, they're trying to like screw this thing in there oh, and okay. then put like the tooth on top, like the crown, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Nah, I got a grill. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll be all right. Yeah. I like it now. You know what I mean? Like, it's like I've it had it since I was young. Shit. Mm -hmm. Fire. Um, I was gonna say that I actually just booked my first uh, braces appointment. Did so you? It's gonna be the like the twentieth. <laughs> I'm you know? excited. Uh, so my BM, she actually works at an orthodontist. Oh, that's crazy. It's like up north, and um, yeah, they gave me a good price. I was like, fuck it. I got some uh, some crooked teeth myself, so I'm trying to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I'm scared. I'm kind of scared. I don't know if it's gonna hurt. <laughs> like how it you, hurts. It hurts, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like so. Like so. Yeah. So like the thickness of the wire. Like depending on if it's thicker or thinner. Like it brings the teeth together. It pushes them apart. Mm -hmm. So like once they put it in, like it's gonna hurt. They're gonna do their thing, and then you're gonna get used to it. Yeah. And then like you're gonna go back, and then they're gonna take that wire out and then put a bigger one in. So it's either gonna like hurt it more, and you have to get used to that. So it's just like this repetitive pain over and over again and like you're getting used to it and then the moment it stops hurting it's like damn i got a dentist appointment I got a you know what i'm saying like i'm not gonna lie that sounds kind of raw because yeah. you're kind of like forcing yourself to be uncomfortable bro it's so uncomfortable like and you got to watch what you eat right yeah eating foods is like different foods obviously it didn't stop me but like just eating different foods it's like it hurts the first couple of days like eat yeah. ice cream anything cold really cold. oh i can't imagine yeah. yeah no i'm saying like anything cold like helps yeah. the soothing Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, okay. if you eat ice cream, if you do, like, popsicles and all of that shit, like, chewing, not chewing on ice, but, like, putting it in your mouth, like, it yeah. helps with the pain. Like, yeah. But, all right, good tip, good tip. Yeah, I got I'm you. definitely uh, stock up on some cold shit. <laughs> <laughs> but what, uh, how did you meet Equan and, like, because I've heard his podcast before. He was on, uh, I think, Sad Boy Radio, right? Yeah. And then they were, like, talking about... Shout out, Matt. How he... He's used to, like, managing um, artists, but he didn't really um, know exactly how to manage, like, a person with a brand or something. Yeah. But then I, I guess he figured it out. Right? Yeah, so I used to work at Yelp. And That's fire. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Me and Marquise met working at Yelp, and the reason that we even got close was I was wearing Dave the Slackers brand, mm. and uh, it's called Slackers. Shout out, Dave. And he was like, my rapper signed to them. Like, that's his brand. Like, he co-signed oh, them. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and at the time, I had met Dave years before that at this event on the south side, like, Cottage Grove, like, 50th and Cottage Grove, some shit like that. And, I, again, I was in the back of his thing selling out T-shirts, like, passing them out, helping them out. I met AK that day. I met Astro mm -hmm. that day. And my big homie Jesus is the person who brought me. So I had these shirts for this long-ass period of time that I was rocking. And that was like the first time somebody acknowledged it that was like outside of who I knew. So then he, you know, we just started like going out, kicking it, do, being at events together. And then I was just like, hey, bro, like I need a little help doing certain things or like getting advice. Like I can do everything myself if I really wanted to. I think everyone can. Yeah. But it's way better when you do it with your homies. So it's way better when you have somebody to bounce an idea off of or just like, hey, man, like I need a little help doing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he made it a little easier to get shit done, to put me in the right room so I can meet Aldrin again and have that relationship and him print my shirts. And now if I have any questions about sizing or, you know, whatever it is about printing shirts, like now I could hit AK and be like, thanks. Yeah. But I did all that to Marquise, you know what I mean? Or most of it, certain parts of it. I want to have like everybody that you named on this pod. I feel like all of them would make like great guests. Yeah, um, absolutely. Everyone's super talented. Shout out Nico, shout out Dave. AK, of course, you know, like, I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess the first time I really got to work with you was at the Superstar Experience. Yeah. And, like, the um, the vibes were just amazing. We were having a great time. And then I remember um, <laughs> bro, I brought out, like, a flamethrower. Oh, my God, And that shit bro. was, like, legendary. Like, <laughs> like, it worked that time, but then... <laughs> Then it got to the point where it was a little too much, and then people were like, bro, he's tweaking. Bro, he freak, bro. <laughs> first of all, he was young. He was just a young kid. Yeah. <laughs> and he owned the place. like, And it was crazy that he like brought it out in the middle of somebody's set and just like 
there's a crowd right there, bro. Like, you got to chill. <laughs> and he this felt, motherfucker, he, he got the, the all going off, bro. He was so excited. <laughs> he was so excited. Man, I remember that show, too. And he had told me that uh, he wanted, to, like, a custom piece. So I made him, like, a bear because I think his, his brand has a bear in it. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, that's how I got acquainted with him. And then I was like, oh, we were thinking about having a Halloween party, which is crazy because it's around Halloween time again, you know? Yeah. And damn. now I'm in, I have my own space, but like back then I needed one. And um, yeah. I ended up using it like not to, we used it, me, Rich, uh, Jazz, we had a show there. It was Halloween. Yeah. Um, it was a great time for <laughs> how long it lasted, but <laughs> then it got cut short, unfortunately. I heard we got a phone call. That's crazy, dude. We were in the middle of the club. And he called you guys Marquise. were like across the street, right? Yeah, like, yeah. white we bar. That far. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I yeah. guess the guy was complaining that there's people on the sidewalk, but like, how can I control that? Like, you can't stop people from being on the sidewalk. Like, I don't know. And then um, it is what it is. It ended up like being canceled early, and then we just came here. We actually did have the studio, but we didn't feel like it was ready for events and shit. Yeah. I mean, you've had the space for a long time, and you have done a lot yeah. of events here, though. It's been like a year, yeah. 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 Yeah, I guess so. For the people that don't know, um, you've also worked with like a lot of big brands, and like, um, well, as far as like Nike and uh, like, do you see yourself working with anybody else, or like, who would you want to? Man, that was awesome. Or like, yeah, how was that experience? Like, that was on some random stuff. Uh, again, my big homie Jesus has sent me an Instagram message and was like, "Hey, like, Nike has like this class thing. Like, they're taking free submissions. Like, sign up." And uh, honest to God, like the last day, I think it was like the day 20th or whatever like the 20th was the day i do remember that and like it was due that day and i just submitted like this paragraph of who i was as a creative and where i was like at that point in time and then a couple of pictures in my video that i did for my brand and i submitted it and then like a week later they were like hey you actually been selected to do this <laughs> nike class and i was like great like awesome like as a any creative, I think it's like, especially in Chicago, you always want to work with like Nike, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like for it to be free, the class, they gave us like four sessions. It was like 16 of us and they broke us into teams of four. And we got to work with these really dope run crews in Chicago who are my run crew, the Venados, they're from Pilsen, heavily Latino based. And they've been around since 1981. Like they're one of like the longest run crews in Chicago. So it was like dope to kind of like represent them. We got to create two pieces of merch. We did a crew neck, a gray crew neck, and then we did a black Nike hoodie, like traditional stuff. Yeah. And uh, and then we got to film a commercial for that like drop and like for them like gearing up. And, you know, it was, it was really dope. Like just the whole experience, the people that I've met, like it was raw. Yeah. It was raw. <laughs> like I, yeah, I got like a couple of things on my bucket list. Like I worked with Nike and I was on stage with Chief Keith one time and that shit was that's it. I'm done. I can die happy, bro, for <laughs> real. Honestly. Wait, I did I did go down your Instagram and you had a mic in your hand, you were like screaming to the crowd. You're like, What up, Chicago? Okay, that what was, was a show that we did. So my best friend Jose, um, you know, we've been chasing like this music grind for a while. Mm. Uh he's been working with some artists. Um and at the time we couldn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like, we couldn't book shows in Chicago. It was hard. It was hella expensive at the time. And we were, like, 19, 18, 19, and just trying to, like, figure it out. Right. And it was just tough. So, like, he had some connects in Florida through another guy, and we just got to 30 shows, and that's where I met Squeak. Mm -hmm. And Squeak was our DJ, and that was amazing. We just shut down, like, Tampa, Florida for a day. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was awesome. Yeah, that shit was awesome. That was that was the one time. Yeah, we, yeah. we threw a couple shows. Um, you remember, you do you remember Jerry Woods? Yeah, yeah. We threw his show at uh at what's it called? Damn, Recess or some shit. He went to provide that one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we threw his opening show at uh. It was right off fucking uh two ninety right when you get off the highway. I think it's called somewhat an R. I don't remember. Damn. Yeah, but we threw his his Chicago home opening show. That's where I met Besky at for like the first time in person. Yeah, shout out Besky. You got the collab on. Yeah, right now. that's my boy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's how like, but that's how I, that's how I got in the scene in in general. It was like through the music with my boy Jose, just trying to figure it out. Like we had an internship at this uh, at this recording studio, Complex Twenty Ten. Shout out Merck, um, and he just like kind of like let us run his social media for a couple of months. That's crazy. Yeah. So like we were just like you know, following people. We used this thing called like crowdsource or something. And what, we, what the app would do is like, I could go to like Joe Fresh Goods followers 
and follow up to 100 people. And then the next day we would log in and see who didn't follow us back, unfollow them, and then go to somebody else's <laughs> like Snoop Dogg's That's or so whatever, smart. Yeah. and follow another 100 and get those followers. And then we would start like tweeting about like little events that we would have in the studio and stuff. Is that thing still out? What? Like CrowdSurf? Yeah. CrowdSource, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about it? Like, would you do it for negatives or? Yeah, like I said, it's just a tool to kind of use. Like, you're not buying anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're just kind of like. Getting in front of people. Yeah, because like, like I said, you could search anybody that you want to that's related to you. If it's a musician, if it's an artist, if it's, you know, a how to help God. You know what I mean? You can mm -hmm. go and like find what people are interested in because people follow what people are interested in. So you could just go in there and copy them, see who follow you back, and then just start growing your, your base like that. Wow. No, that's a really good game for anybody listening. Definitely tap in. Um, man, <clears throat> so you don't consider yourself a negative person at all, though, right? No, I, I do. Yeah? Yeah. And do you mean, like, as far as, like, realistic or in a way that's, like... Yeah, more realistic. Like, you know, okay, so, like, it's always, like, glass half empty or glass half full, right? Right. But either way, you're right. No matter how you look at it, right? If you're a glass half empty person, you're yeah. still right. It's half empty. If you're a glass half full person, you're still right. It's half full. But so like, it doesn't how, matter? No, it doesn't. Okay. But like like I said, I live in that line. <laughs> like that's not like I think Eminem has a, a, a bar and like obviously it's Eminem, but it's like there's a fork in the road and I went straight. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I didn't get to choose good or bad, light or evil, like but we live in it and it's everywhere around us. But mm. like how do you manage and maneuver? It's like you just keep fucking going. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's with like everything in life. Like there can't be light without shadow, especially like Fact. being an artist. Like you literally can't paint without it. Like you need both. And it's like you're right in the middle. That's a great way to describe it. Fuck yeah. Um <clears throat> as far as like what people can expect out of like twenty twenty three, what are you what are you trying to do? Like maybe set a goal for yourself. Like, um, I got goals for everything. Um, little ones, big ones, but it's just like how do you get to the goal? You know what I mean? I could write it yeah. down on paper, but like, how do I get to the goal? So it's like. That's why I don't like like the, where do you see yourself in five years? Like, I feel like it needs to be a little sooner. Like, cause I like to think of life like how old are you? a month away type shit. 27. 27. Okay. So yeah, you're right. I'm 28. So you're right around my age. Like, like 10 years ago, do you think you'd see yourself where you're at now? No. You ever see those TikToks where they're like, man, I wish I sold more shirts. And then it cuts <laughs> to like, we sell shirts. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I see those. That's right. Like, I, I would have never expected this. I didn't. Right. But, yeah. I think it's, yeah, you do got to stop and like appreciate. Like, you got to smell the flowers every now and then. You know what I mean? Like, literally, like, just. And I think, like, I don't know. I go back to music a lot, too. Like, think about, like, how Frank Ocean releases music. You know what I mean? It's very spaced in between. Yeah. He goes through life. Even Kendrick Lamar, like the last album, I don't know, was like five years or whatever before he dropped the new one. Like you experience some things and you learn and you grow. And like if you just keep trying to put stuff out and like keep up with trends, you're going to lose yourself in certain things. So like stop and just like back away a little bit. I think you did that a lot this year, especially with your brand. Yeah, because I had made it a goal for like 2020 to drop something every month. And okay. then, uh I think I did that. And then 2021, it was like once a month or something. Or like mm. trying to like dial it back a little bit. Oh, wait. No, I just said that. It'd be like, um, wait, we did once a month, like a collection a month. And then we did uh, seasons. Okay. And then now it's kind of just like stuff that I like. Like I just want it for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this but one, even then, it just feels like a lot. <laughs> I got it home back for sure. Yeah, like that's one thing that like when I was when we started our brand, me and Eric, like we were like, like what do we want to do? Like, cause we like if you think about like Joe Fresh, cause when he first dropped, like he was dropping a lot. Yeah, like everything that went on on the internet, like he had a T four. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, do we want to be like that, or do you want to like dial it back and serve like ten pieces of dope real quick, and then do something another ten pieces of dope? You know what I mean? Like, how do you want to be remembered? Or, like, how do you want your pieces to be relived or, like, cherished? Yeah. At least that's how I kind of think about it when we first started. It was For like, sure. how do we want to release clothes? Yeah, but I think there's a, there, there could be, like, a negative side to that as well. <laughs> like, now that we're speaking about that. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> you could get forgotten. But, like, <laughs> there's that. You could get forgotten, but you could also, um, like when you drop, like it could have been better, right? Or like every time. But the only way that you would have known that is if you drop. 
So yeah. like, isn't it? We were just talking about this. Like, is yeah. it better to like drop and then fix it, or like yeah. think that you got the best product? Like, nah, you, know you always drop and fix. Yeah, because like like we I went with I went like last year with my brand like. I did really good with the first drop. Like, right, I did number with the yeah, first drop. Yeah, I seen everybody post it, everybody from our neighborhood. Yeah. Like, that's what I really love about you because it's like, you know all the Merrill's people, like all the Stone Park people. All the, like, I know Bell everybody, people, bro. Like, you know I know everybody, bro. But like a lot of people don't know about the West Suburbs and I feel like we have like, we have like a good amount of talented people. Like when I seen uh, Doghouse Radio um, do their shit, I was like, damn. There are people here that want to like make it out, you know. Like, no, yeah, it's not. You're just not trying to be in that like niche, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. I grew up with like kids that just see themselves working and like they rather play sports. They rather like focus. I mean, uh, I guess the sports don't really matter as much, but they just didn't focus on anything creatively or like artistic. I think that goes back to like the conversation that we were having earlier about like. Damn, this shit's pearl. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, it just kind of goes back to that conversation that we were having earlier about like, like I tell I tell I tell people this all the time. Like where I feel like I am in my life is like I'm that first next step, right? Like for mm -hmm. my family or for my brother. Like my brother's like one of my biggest inspirations. Like that's my little dog. So I like how can I make this little life that we have? Damn, better? let's shout out your step. brother really quick. Uh, he actually has a Twitch, right? Yeah, he does have a Twitch. Yeah, I want people to follow him too. Yeah, follow him on Twitch. Uh, S O D M G Yo Auntie yeah. underscore Yo Auntie. That's a um, whole nother world too. Yeah, bro. Tough. But I'm doing his TikToks, mm -hmm. like cutting them and putting yeah, them together. Yeah. Like and he's just recording the stuff on his like computer and stuff. And it's like it's hard to be consistent every yeah. day with that. Yeah. And you know, like you got like Gary V, like, oh you need to do three TikToks every day. Like and it's it's tough to keep people's attention for sure. Um on anything. Yeah. But, but uh how how do you edit? Do you use like your phone? I use a lot of iMovie and like cap cut and shit but um so i do like for for the it's just for tiktok like he we don't do anything else like it's just tiktok and we wanted to focus on growing his tiktok oh nice so, so you like get it within the app within the app yeah. yeah because sometimes i hear that uh tiktok and instagram push that more if you use like their effects and like their cuts and shit yeah they do i mean it's like it's hard to stay in front of somebody every day with like out having to do things every day. You know what I mean? Like he has to play every day, capture these clips, send them to me so that I could cut and edit and post every day. You know what I mean? And like, it's hard. You have to keep that shit consistent. So like, does he tell you like, Oh, I, I did like something wrong this time and you get to cut it there. Or you got to look for it. Like both. <laughs> like they'll be like, he'll be like, this is this folder. Yeah. That's the one. Like this, the last clip. You know what I mean? Like this, I did some shit on this, and then there's other ones that's just like, damn dog, you ain't killed somebody in a minute. Like where the <laughs> fuck is it? Where you at, bro? You got to experience like his gameplay too. Yeah, and that's funny. Yeah, oh, yeah Twitch is crazy. Twitch is fun. Yeah, but like I was saying, like that just kind of goes back to like, you know, I, like I was saying, I tell people this all the time. It's like. Where I'm at in life, it's like I'm the building block of what's next. You know what I mean? Somebody in my family is going to look at me and be like, damn, he didn't do it the conventional way. He still went to school. He still got educated, but he's still doing what he wants and what he's passionate about. Like You don't have to do it how everybody else wants to do it. Like You don't have to do the yeah. right race. You know what I mean? Like You can make your own race. We're the exact like, same person in our family, I feel like. My family, they all went to like... uh they got their their degree. They got engineer jobs and shit. And then mm. they're looking at me like, "Damn, like, all right, we get it. Like, when are you gonna get a real job type shit?" And Never. I yeah. I mean, I got a real job now. I me too. <laughs> I'm trying to quit that bitch. But like, how do you how do you manage like working a full time job and running a business? Uh, it's hard, man. It's hard because there aren't enough hours in the day. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I need one more hour. Or like, you know what I mean? But it's just like, you kind of like just have to do it. Like, you find what you can tolerate. Like, my job isn't too stressful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It is competitive. It is, you know, a tougher working environment. But like, I'm doing that so that I can pay for the clothes that I want to make. Yeah. Because I want to make clothes that I wear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not making clothes for anybody else but me. You know what I mean? So like. I'm just doing it to have fun and like this is the passion that I chose, the life that yeah. I chose. And I'm just gonna keep going with it. Yeah, there's a, a similar way that um, we're both uh, the same is that we're both around a lot of rappers. Like yeah. you ever like, notice that? We're probably like the designer of the group or whatever. 
Because I'm around like Fiji and like Joey and shit. And, like you're still at the studio shit, but you're still like designing on your own. And, yeah. And I look at them and I'm, I'm like, they inspire me, you know. And like this was like my way of contributing to like yeah exactly society, you know? no yeah exactly this it's is like, what i what i have to offer this is what you get it where you fit in you know what i mean like yeah. they're doing their thing and they've always been like like i was telling you bro like y'all inspire me so much like seeing y'all do it at such a young age you know what i mean like when nobody else went in our area was doing shit like that you know yeah. what i mean i was like damn i could do it you know and i did it i just did it like 10 years later <laughs> Nah, and it doesn't even matter because like um as long as you start, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people just think, like, they're... Like, literally just had a conversation with one of my coworkers, and he was, like... He's, like, 35. He's, like, nah, it's too late for me, man. Like... It's <laughs> not. Like, it's not. It's not. Like, you just got to do it. And, yeah. like, once you do it and you see how you can get it done, and you get to redo it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, every time it's, like, a redo. Mm-hmm. And you just have to, like... i do yourself, improve. though. Yeah. You gotta, like, it's, it's you against you. Right. Yeah. Damn. I love Fiji, man. I love Joey. Like, they was, bro, Joey and Fiji came to my house in Milwaukee and did a show. No way. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. You were living in Milwaukee? Wasn't this like a frat house? Or am I no, it wasn't a frat house. It, it was, was our you? house. Who? It was me, my boy Levi, Mark. Like, we all, oh, Kevin. Oh, wow. It bro. was our crew. Do you remember me there? Yeah. With Monster Mike? Yeah. He closed out the show, I think. That was probably the first day we met. Mm hmm. Because. I remember that day specifically. Yeah. It was my first time drinking lean. <laughs> Dude, people that, don't tell you that you got to use the bathroom a lot when you're on lean. Bro, you got to do a lot of shit when you're on lean. You got to <laughs> slow your fucking roll when you pull that shit. Bro. I had to uh, call one of my homies to like come pick me up because I was not. Yeah, bro, that was our there. crew. That's fire, bro. This show was legendary. This was like some project that shit. Like before that bro, shit. Was uh, we didn't even have a real speaker. <laughs> we were like playing people's no, music wait, off a of soundbar, bro. Wait, wait. Do you know Stupid Neil? Yes. How? We went to college with him. Oh, my God. Yeah, Legendary. I'm telling you. People need to look up Stupid Neil. That boy is a, he a goofball, but whatever he do, he's so good at it. He said. He's so good at it. Tommy Bahama. Bank account. Got like, I don't know how many commas. There's a lot of commas. One comma. <laughs> <laughs> that that was, was the bar of a bank account guy. I remember I got to meet him One that day. Comma. We talked like, oh, man, shout out Stupid Neil. Yeah, my boy really, Cam. Shout out my boy Cam. That was his boy. How's he doing, as far as I know, on the Twitter sphere, he looked decent. You know what I mean? Yeah, I look it up. We gotta look him up. But man, that was such an amazing show. So, I mean, you've curated a couple events, right? Like, how many are like, do you have a favorite one? What do you think? Yeah, definitely gotta be the Superstar event. True. It was like, I don't know, like, everybody that was in that show with us, like, all of the vendors. Shout out to Splax. Yeah. Wow. The Ghetto Flower. Shout out Splax. Ghetto Flower. Yeah. Uh, the Chill Bar Company. Like, they, we saw weed, that shit was ice so cream. Good. Yeah. It was amazing. Um, me, you, you said Ghetto Flower already. And then all of the artists, like, it was just, like, it was so many people in there, bro. Yeah, my mom came. Okay. That was the first time. That's why it was probably my favorite, because my mom came. Yes, I talked to your parents. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Fuck. That has to be a great feeling. So how do they feel about um, what you're doing now? It's, like, do they accept it or they n- still? Like, now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because I didn't give them a choice. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, obviously, like, I did get a job. I, You know, I'm taking care of paying my bills. Like, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm a regular person. You know what I mean? But, like, you know, it was hard for her to kind of accept, like, who I am, what I like, what I like doing, like. But, like, now, like, when we were young, man, like, I took my mom had me. She was 20 when she got pregnant, 21 when I got born. Like, I grew up with my mom. You know what I mean? Like, she was so young. And, like, looking back on it now, like, there was no idea she knew what she was doing. Yeah. And I was giving her hell. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, me and Mike giving her hell. Yeah. And it's like you feel like you you all her life, you know? Like, you're trying to provide more than she can provide. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. want to retire my parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, Man, that would be great. But my mom is so smart, bro. Like, yeah. my mom's made a hundred, like, three figures, you know, like, yeah. for a long time. You know what I mean? Like, she's so smart. Like, she, like, she's the definition of getting it out the mud. I love that. And yeah. my grandpa is like that, too. Like, my grandpa, I think he, I don't think he has a high school education. But we own the building that I live in now, like, currently. Like, it's their building. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, up north Chicago. Like, for an immigrant to come and do that. And hold land for years. Like, I'm talking, like, my whole family grew up in this motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's I love something. That, bro. Yeah. 
So like that's where this shit come from. It's like y'all did that. Like y'all put this security down for us, and now it's like now we can be free from all of that shit. Yeah. You know, like the next generation, whatever it is, my child, my whoever child, like your yeah. child, like. That's what I want to be for Lucas. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna look at something like I don't have to do this. I could do what I want. Yeah. At a young age, I'm you know whatever they want to do, do it. Paint, draw, whatever, all in. Because there's endless opportunity out there. Thanks. Oh yeah. Wow. I think um, I would I would want him to like pursue whatever he wants, and I don't think um, I would ever like doubt him. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. And, there's, and that's the difference is because, like, Cause parents put, like their, yeah. um, their limits on you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it comes with, it like, comes having with good intention, but it's, it's always, like, in practice, it's, like, it's laid out harshly. Yeah. Like, living up to certain, like, expectations or, like, you know, just, like, whatever, whatever anybody puts on you, it's like, damn, why? Like, I don't want to do that. Like, yeah. I don't want to. Because life is so job. short, you know what I'm saying? Bro, this shit is short. But I'm definitely blessed. For Fact. Sure. Fact. Shout out to all the moms. Um, is there anything you want to get off your chest? <laughs> we could do this forever. <laughs> um, Just like, I don't know, tell more people about you. I feel like you like a silent hero or like killer or like however you want like whatever adjective you use to describe yourself like <laughs> that's you, fire you know what i mean like you killer. just yeah you just kind of like you do you but like it's all you you know what i mean so like i feel like uh i already had like a battery in my back but when i got lucas like that shit just like became supercharged or something because mm -hmm. um i don't know I, I look at myself compared to like the people in my studio or like the people around me and i just know like <clears throat> i have a I have to like I have a kid I'm responsible for you know what I'm saying so it's like a different motivation mm -hmm. but even before that like with the effective stuff like um I was never really one for like speaking on what I was gonna make because it always like I was really worried about it not working out or like jinxing myself so I was really just quiet I'm a big and, believer like, in jinxing yourself <laughs> So now I, I'm trying to change that narrative you know what I mean? like I'm trying to do like these uh mantras and like trying to like be like fuck it i can speak on it and it's gonna happen regardless but um yeah sometimes you speak about it too early and then it's just like it's like you or like it doesn't work out the way you wanted it right yeah i but, like that <clears throat> you gotta shoot yourself in the back it's crazy yeah i really like um like the progression i made i do see myself like getting better but then i sometimes doubt myself if i should be like um focused on clothes or like art or like like what's gonna make me a better person because i gotta manage time with like my family as well like i can't really say i'm with it 100 percent. i gotta give some to my son too like time mm -hmm. like i know i could go so much crazier if i didn't have a day job <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah but no, i feel that i mean shit, i was doing this while i had a job and i had school so then it just came naturally to me like i couldn't see myself having sanity without putting some shit out like it's like therapy it's like but um, you feel so accomplished once it's like even when it's done you yeah. know what i mean and like even if you don't like it all the way or whatever <laughs> you know what i mean like the fact that it's out there and people are like receiving it yeah like it's a different it's a different feeling i think i think it's so rewarding i can only imagine how many times you watch that uh video of yours you should uh, i don't watch it that often to be honest really i show people as much as i can yeah but i don't like sit there and like watch it I, I remember seeing that shit and I was like, wow, you're crazy. Yeah. Shout out Ronnie. Isn't actor. it like fun? Like just shooting video? Bro, it's so fun. It's probably like with the Nike thing. Like, so right. like that's where I, I feel like I shine. Like Damn. that was my piece of like, you know what I mean? Like helping out. Like, because I didn't design the merch. You know what I mean? I put my input in. I gave them like, like I was the one doing the back research on the, on the group and shit like that. Like. And they came up with the designs like my boy Myron, Briscoe, and Jason. Like they went crazy. Yo, shout out Briscoe. That's my dog, bro. I have like I have his uh it's like a Buster Rhyme like beanie. I yeah. love that shit. Bro, he's so crazy with the accessories, bro. Yeah. I've been trying to get those blue glasses he put out for months. Yeah, he goes crazy. And yeah. like his fit. He's damn near, I'm not even gonna try to compare him to Matt, but like they remind me of each other. You got yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. I wouldn't want to offend either of them. But like they're all they're both like doing their thing. Yeah. 
No, he's dead, dead, bro. They're crap. Myron, the dude, like, he's a painter and a singer and a digital creator. Like, he's crazy, too. Yeah. And then Jason, like, the way he puts text and everything together, like, he really, like, he really sealed a lot of, like, the, the final designs, like, lettering-wise. Mm -hmm. And it just, it worked perfectly for, like, what we were trying to do. How do you feel about, like, the, <coughs> the saying, like, jack of all trades, master of none? Like, do you think it's possible to dabble in, like, various and I still feel, be the best? Or, like, I feel like that's how I am. Yeah. Because, like, like I told you, like, I don't draw. You know, mm -hmm. like, I don't have an iPad. Like, I don't, I don't create anything digitally, but I see things in my head really clearly. And I can describe things and I can create like worlds or like emotions through like what I tell people that I have this vision for. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why Eric works perfect with me. It's because like I could tell him what I got in my head and it just like he comes out with it. It takes his time, but like, you know what I mean? Like, and then the, you just create this like thing that exists. Yeah. You know? That's fire. <clears throat> I think at the end of the day, we're all like tools too. <clears throat> so like, yeah. it's so like, just how you use it. I feel like, yeah, that's I feel like anybody could do anything, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. why I like podcasting so much because like at the end of the day, you're trying to get a message across. Mm -hmm. So like audio just kind of like cuts the middleman out. You're just kind of just speaking to the people directly. But um, yeah. sometimes you do want to tell a story with it or you want to like have visuals and shit. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're going to keep improving Yeah, for sure. I think just like in general, the story part to everything is what people fall in love with. And that's something I learned like through the Nike classes. Like that's really important. Like yeah. if you miss that part of like anything, bro, like the story in your song, the story in your art or your music or whatever, like you're, the people aren't going to like necessarily recognize, oh, it's a good design. It's cool. Yeah. But like, what does it mean? Like, why do people want to shop with you and spend their money? And like, what holds value to them? So if you can find something that's in common with them and you can branch on that story and then, and then you bring them a part of your world, it's so totally, like, that's yeah. it. That's what I feel like kind of made it difficult to run like at Factus because we didn't really have a story for it. Like we had a meaning, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like something that we could, like we didn't have like our, we kept trying to switch like our our style. Like we kept trying to like find our way, but like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's but, I mean, okay, so like think about it like. <sighs> I'm glad you have some effective pieces though. Yeah, not everything works though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's okay. Like things are meant to fail, but like, if you didn't do it, Vectus, you wouldn't be Pop's Prince. Facts. And Fiji wouldn't be Fiji. And Joey wouldn't be Joey. And whoever else, and, and Squared, you know, whoever else was a part of that collective. Like, whatever they're doing now is a direct result of, like, what you tried to do at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, you guys went your own way, but, like, you guys are still dope. You know what I mean? Even together. <laughs> Effectus did start it off, to be honest, because I was reaching out to them. Even, like, Yachty, we have a whole group chat that we've been having since then uh united nations <laughs> <laughs> what a group chat name that's lit and then we just kind of um yeah all met up to really work on some shit but then it just turned into a lot of smoking and then we just became friends <laughs> but it, it the business is what starts it for yeah, real you talking about y'all need a girl yeah does so she be dressing crazy crazy bro, she's, her her, bro yeah. they be going nuts mm -hmm. yeah. um yeah matt too yeah, like, yeah. It's a cool little uh, way that we all met. Exactly. And that's it. Like, I guess that is the story. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing. In fact, this wasn't ready because we we're still writing the story. You know what I mean? exactly. Like, how am I going to tell a story that we're still writing? Exactly. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to document things in real time, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, somebody's got to do it for me and shit. <laughs> uh, you seen the Kanye shit, right? What's his yeah. name? Like, Genius. Yeah. What's the guy that shot it? <sighs> I don't know his name. Fuck. I ain't going to lie to you. But the, but the thing is, like, if you start, like, paying attention to things now and, like, cinema and media and all of, like, the streaming stuff that we have, like, back then, everybody was filming every fucking thing. Like, there's video for everything. Until there wasn't any technology, right? Or, like, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, to, like, yeah. The 70s. Yeah, but, like, like even, like, Mike, you know what I mean? Like, when that documentary came out, like, yeah. you think it's like, damn, they were really recording this back then for this right now? Probably not, but, like, they did it uh, for something. You seen the Redeem team? Yeah, I just watched that. And it's crazy how they kept that footage like exactly for all this time right exactly 
So they have to have be holding hell of hell. Of, hell, hell and that, yeah. those like those things teach me about like patience, because like think about that. Like as a camera person and editing and having this film, like you edit, you know what I mean. Like you do your thing, like having all of this documentation and holding on to it. Like you're basically doing it for free until the moment that it's not. Because like then then you start reaching out yeah. and being like, hey, I have all of this footage. Let's make this documentary. Let's make this money. It's the same reason I still post on Facebook because I just want to keep all those pictures there. Eh? <laughs> I feel like Facebook is the place that you like leave your pictures at. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, like those albums and shit. Oh yeah, because it's that big ass database. But it's the same with Instagram. Man. Like they yeah. know each other. Like that's how, like it's a. No, I was surprised it's a timeline. from looking at your page. Like you still got like probably your first post ever. Yeah, literally, I haven't taken a single thing. Down. Well, I took. No, nah, I ain't gonna care. I took a lot of shit down. <laughs> but yeah. You know what I mean? I have a lot. Yeah, my first post, like, no, yeah. So, yeah, I feel like there's so many memories I wish I could have relived. That's why I do like documenting everything. And then people sometimes say like, "Oh, you're not living in the moment if you document it." But at the same time, it's like I am living in the moment, and I could really live it another day. And re like, I think that's like the highest form of appreciation is like the person that's sacrificing them being in the moment to be like bro this is such a moment that i have to capture like i gotta be the one to capture it facts you know what oh I mean? my like, god yeah uh, it's like home videos and shit you know what I mean? like when you were a shorty like yeah there's like, someone that has to take one for the team and exactly. just be behind the camera right? yep yeah yep. Who, shout out to them every time mm -hmm. shout out to them yeah and i feel like i'm gonna do this until I find uh, someone to do it for me for sure. Like I would love to be able to expand and hire employees and shit. You know. Yeah, I and mean, it I will think, happen. You know, yeah, it's, it's definitely it's the goal. Like, it's a matter of time. Yeah, you just gotta be big enough. You know what I mean? You gotta create that structure. Hell yeah. Because it's hard. I think um, I'm excited to see like where this goes and how we could work together for sure. Yeah, I, mean, I had an idea. I was I was thinking we could do like um, the Scott Pilgrim, but like the Mega Scott. Oh my. I love that's my favorite movie, bro. Even that like this black and white would be a cool one. Oh my Scott Pilgrim versus the world would be sick. Yeah. We gotta work. Oh he could be in like a negative T or whatever. Yeah, like a negative negative Scott and then like it better just be black and white and like the invert the outline. Yeah. I could see it now. And then another one could be we could put it in the path shirt too. Yeah. That would be dope. I like that. Oh man, I can't believe you said that. That's yeah, amazing. a while ago I did like a Scott program with like instead of the Smashing Pumpkins, it was a PP for Pouch Friends. Mm. Yeah, but I, I, I like know. that one because it was when he was uh he got his like power ups and shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn, shout out. My old self was so much better. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I need to get back to the art. For I real. mean, just like, but like, look <laughs> at you now. You know what I mean? Like, you can sit back and appreciate that and like recognize yourself as yeah. like growing. Because I think that's like the main thing about doing all of this is like progression yeah or like how can you step it up or do something bigger or do something better or like i don't know just make it mean more you know what i mean whether it's to yourself or to like the outside audience that you share with the world you know what i mean like how can this be the best that i think it could be yeah it's crazy because a lot of times people will delete their old work and like specifically i know like joey he's, he took down like bittersweet epiphanies and that shit was mm -hmm. it i used to love it yeah uh, uh, what was is, what was the one with the drops was that digital drip bro yeah classic top tier love it that one's out but uh it's it's um uh, it's like people need to be able to see that progression you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but i think music is so much more personal yeah you know what i mean like getting on there and like like even doing this now you know what i mean like sitting here and recording yourself like it's hard you know what I mean? Like, you're putting, like, your feelings on something that, like, people can, like, relate to, listen to, or, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's different. So, like, making music is so much personal, more personal. So, I just think, like, when they take it down, it's just, like, maybe something in that point of time when they made that music might not Facts. be good with them. You know what I mean? Or, like, whatever it is, like, or they're insecure about it, or they don't think it's their best work. Like, I don't know. That shit hard. It's like uh, Kid Cudi, he didn't like Speeding Bullet. mm He's but like, a lot of people like love that album. But we love it, yeah. Exactly. Facts. <clears throat> Man. What was, like, the moment that got you into the art or, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think every person has, like, an origin story. So, like, what's, like, your, you know, um, like, what made you want to do this? It was really my mom, too. Like, anytime my mom would, like, compliment my drawings or, like, she'll, like, 
she always made me feel like I was the best drawer in the world. Like, um, so then I was like, like, really? Do you think I'm good? And then, um, mm, ah, this is so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a chaser or some ice. Um, so she would always tell me like, uh, like you could draw, you could keep drawing, but like you should focus on like the business side of it and like business administration, mm-hmm. how to run the business. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I, I tried, but I only got my associates and then I was like, no, nah, I need to dedicate myself to like what I'm happy, like making or like what I'm passionate about. Yeah. And then, um, now nah, to be honest, I, I, I can't really pinpoint. I feel like I've been drawing my whole life ever since I was like maybe six or three. <laughs> I was trying to like um, trace a lot of, they had like these trace, tracing books of like uh, Dragon Ball Z. Okay. So it was like a transfer paper on top of a regular drawing and you just kind of like trace over it like with the light on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> I feel like that's what got me into it. So I, I started off tracing and then I went into like making my own characters and it was really effective that got me into it because I was only trying to learn Photoshop to make clothes. And then I was like, oh shit, there's a brush tool. And then I started like moving it around. And then you're literally like painting digitally. <laughs> and I was I was oblivious to the fact that there was a tablet. Like I, I didn't know that you could use a pen or anything, you know? I was using the little, the mouse pad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still making like my homies and shit, like uh, little characters and cartoons. And then, yeah, just people telling me that they fucked with my work. That's, it. That's dope. I'm uh. See, I, I, took, I took a college class. Um, I'm a humble narcissist. Or what's it? <laughs> uh, empathetic narcissist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't like it when I call myself a narcissist. But I don't know. It's funny. I think that that word is funny. The word, it, yeah. But like people put meaning on words all the time. Yeah. It's like, it's harsh. Don't get me wrong. But like, I think everybody's a little narcissistic. Um, like, it's your life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You have like that flaw or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. You like. Know, like the one controlling your life so. exactly everybody just like yeah i think i'm the main character in the movie you feel me like this is my movie yeah lately i've been trying to push the narrative that i'm like the best friend of the main character because i feel like he doesn't have to do as much as the work <laughs> he could just like ride the benefits and not yeah, really yeah. like you're ron stoppable feel with like i'm more like a i'm like a sheen <laughs> you know? like a she- <laughs> no that's funny as hell I but feel that. i feel like sometimes you got to take the leadership role and I'm just taking it until somebody else could like take it. Cause yeah, yeah I'm more, I'm gonna figure it out. I feel like we're both like, um, and in, in the same position, like. Yeah, I got a lot of growing to do still, man. Like even growing up is like hard. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> you, you get all just like more responsibilities and shit. But like, I don't know. It's just like I don't. I don't. I don't see myself like not growing and doing something. Like even like, I know. I know. Pe- I've met people to like this year that are like in their seventies <clears> and still <throat> just like doing what they love to do. You know what I mean? Like they found something that like isn't a job to them. That's crazy. I don't know anybody like that. Not in their seventies. Like, yeah, yeah. Like it was in the like in the Nike school creative scene. Like they have people come talk to us, and it's just like damn. Like the way he spoke about the science behind certain things that they were doing with like the shoes. Like, yeah. it's like, damn, like you don't, you don't see it as like work. Like you get, mm-hmm. you get to create something every day. You know what I mean? That has purpose, that has meaning, that has use. You know what I mean? Like he didn't see it like that. Mm-hmm. And that's how I want to do whatever it is that like I end up doing with negatives or with the rappers that we help out or like, you know what I mean? Like that shit is going to feed my kids one day. Hell yeah. Fuck. I feel like uh, we're trying to leave a legacy, right? We're trying to like change it for our family. It's like, it's like build one. You know what I mean? Like start one for me. I feel, you know what I mean? Like I know I'm not going to be the person that is at the top of the castle at the end of it. You know what I mean? Like the fairy tale, like you, you wish, you know what I mean? Like I'm not going to be the millionaire. But you'll be like the stepping stone or like yeah the first stepping stone yeah and i think that's important you know what i mean like there's always like somebody that makes that sacrifice for the foundation and like you've been through it you've been doing it you know what i mean and like whatever is after this is like cool i helped do that 
and that's how, that's why I appreciate like what my grandpa and my grandma have done and my mom have done. It's like they did another piece of that foundation. Like they already did this, and like now it's this, and then, and then you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Damn. You gotta take a shot to to becoming that seven song. Exactly. I'll take a shot to that. Damn, Damn I want to get my fucking fingers tatted too. <laughs> I mean, you got that raw spaceship. I need to get something there too. I'd say Connie went crazy. She really did. Yeah, I didn't know she did. Just started doing that either. But so, um, yeah, man. Can you shout out your uh, social medias and like your website? Uh, I just got all the social media is gonna be. I'm underscore Leal L E A L underscore Raw, um, and then my brand's page is Our Negatives. Oh, you are negatives. And like that even has a, like a name and a meaning to it. It's like, so Eric started taking photography and I know Vic like for a long time. Yeah. It's so like all that shit's been dope. And like he gave me a camera recently, like a, like a 35 millimeter. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like he wants to like start teaching me to do it. So I'm like super excited. Vic is? Yeah. Oh, I'm sick. Yeah. So I'm like super excited to like get film and like start developing shit like that. Cause like that's going to be Dope. He's literally like negatives, right? That's what they're called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah the role. Like, when you're done, yeah, it's negative. That's sick. Yeah. So like, it's got like a bunch of meanings, bro. Yeah. Like, and that's how it's supposed to feel, right? It's supposed to feel like um, like there's a word for it, not not a coincidence, but like uh, um, I can't even remember right now. Hmm. Not a coincidence. Not superstitious. It's like something with the S. Someone, I don't know. Hold up. Uh, damn, I'm really spacing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did make I'm we too spoke, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, um. Supernatural. Nah. No. That doesn't fit. It, I'll think of it later. Fuck it. Right. I'll add it in right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> Um, but man, thank you for coming and talking to me. I appreciate you. No, thank you for having me. Many bro. more. I want you to come on user friendly for sure. Yeah, definitely. We're gonna have a good time. And I feel like, um, yeah, I'm excited to work with you. I'm excited to see what you do. Yeah, I'm sure. excited too, bro. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. This has been another episode of the PDP. Um, thank you, Lewis. Thank, thank you. you for. Yeah. Thanks for opening up. I feel like I feel like a lot of people. <laughs> I don't. feel like I should open up more. I don't really know. Like, I mean, shit. what don't we know about each other? I don't know. I don't know a lot of shit. I mean, sorry, you're single, man. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> I, don't know why I, said that. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, live your life. No, I want a girlfriend. True. Yeah. Anybody who wanna wake me up, wake me up. <laughs> I'm out here. Fuck it.